That's not good, no compression. I'm Steve from Workbench Z. This lawnmower has no compression. So, we're gonna start tearing it apart and see if we can figure out what's going wrong. filter. Tank. And these Briggs and Stratton motors have an odd ball bolt underneath holding the tank on. And this will give you a little spacer that goes between the tank and the engine block. And now we can disconnect the fuel line from the carburetor. Disconnect the oil fill tube. And the rear bolts for the fan cover. two bolts on the front of the fan cover. Pay careful attention to the springs and take a picture.
so you can put them back on again the way they came off. A bolt on either side of the carburetor lets you unmount it. Any gentle maneuvering of the linkage for the governor and the carburetor comes off. And then this bolt needs to come off so you can remove the flange. And don't lose track of this o-ring and it's not a smart design to get the head off you have to unmount the carburetor bracket and now we can unmount the cylinder head take the cylinder head off there's the problem the intake valve seat has popped out of place and we just rotate the engine a little bit until we get that intake valve to push itself out small scrap of wood and a small handle and we make sure it's all the way back in Not exactly a Briggs & Stratton approved method, but they don't have a proper method for getting a replacement one that will stay in there. Um, what I found from a lot of other YouTubers is to take a punch and punch as close to the ring as you can get. And that should mushroom the lip in, squeezing a little bit so that... <clears throat> There's a little bit of compression left to hold the gasket in place, the seat. Does this work? Kind of. This is the second time this year I've had to do this. So it's not a great fix. It lasted a few months. But I also forgot to go easy on that and slowly let off on the uh, 
engagement bar on the handle so that it breaks to a stop with the valve closed instead of just letting it stop wherever. All right, let's put this back together. Okay, for the carburetor, there's a long, a short, and a long. The second long goes down here to mount the bracket to the engine block. The short one goes on this side because you got the plate back here. Remember that O-ring? back on. And then we carefully feed the governor linkage back into the connector. Short screw on the right. Longer screw on the left. Okay, reconnecting the governor spring goes on this little bar up front. This is the uh, choke. This is the choke, at, and this little piece has to link in there so that it moves open and closed. And the other little spring goes between there and there. Do not make the mistake of linking these. This looks like it ought to go through there. Don't. This is an air vein to turn off the choke once the engine's up to speed. This sits behind the muffler, and when it gets hot, it keeps the choke open on the idea that you don't need choke on a hot engine. And here's a chance to get a good look at this. The bottom of the tank has a mount point for the block bolt goes through this funny little fitting, so grommet I guess, and then mounts to the gas tank. That sets the spacing just right. Don't, don't forget this. You'll never get it mounted up right.
no compression. We took this apart to get the cylinder head off and found the intake ring had popped out of place. Peening around the uh, block where the intake valve seat seats should hold it in place for a while. Although she may be need to replace next year. I'm just gonna have to remember to let off the bar half and let it just die and that should leave the intake valve closed during the compressed cycle when it comes to a final stop and that should keep it together until I can get a new one. I'm Steve from Workbench Seat. Hope you learned something.